Today on Getting Real with the Housewives, we finally find out how Heather got her black eye. Plus, Jersey reveals the first look at their new season. The OG of the OC sat down with us and opened up about her past relationship with Steve. I am still healing from the narcissistic abuse and the trauma bonding and all that crap that happened. And Jen Shaw's home raid discovers 30 fake designer bags. Plus, why she's asking for a shorter prison sentence and won't be attending the Salt Lake City reunion. We've got that plus so much more on today's Getting Real with the Housewives. Hey guys, Christina Garibaldi here with Us Weekly Executive Producer Mandy Camp, and welcome to a very, very big week of Getting Real with the Housewives. So much to get to. Oh my God, we finally... Oh no, we, we don't know who gave Heather the black eye because what the heck, you guys? Did, if this you was all the last most- night... Salt Lake City, you know that uh, Heather did not reveal who gave her the black eye. So please tell us in the comments, who do you think did it? Christina, I think we got to talk about this right off the bat. Who do you think right. gave the black eye? I don't know. I, I really don't know. I get, I don't, I don't even think, I really don't think it's Whitney. I thought it was, yeah. and I kind of think it's Jen. I yeah. really think that she is covering her up because of everything going on with her trial mm-hmm. and things like, I really think that the two of them had it out. I really do, which is insane. Insane. I thought long and hard about this too, and I also landed on Jen because her reaction was fake. Yes. Or it seemed so fake. fake. And Whitney's reaction seemed more genuine when she saw that Heather had the black eye. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They were both up till the wee hours of the morning drinking. I'm going with Jen Shaw and she's yeah. protecting her because of everything else going on in her life. I feel like when Heather said at the end of the episode where she's trying to protect herself, like maybe she didn't want to get brought into the trial as called yeah. to like the witness stand or something like that to like, yeah. uh, you know, talk about her behaviors. And I feel like maybe after it happened, they talked about it and they were like, let's pretend this never, ever happened. Yeah, I I think that's what happened. That's what I'm going with because I need closure on this. And I don't know that we're going to get closure on it. I think we might get closure at the reunion because at this point she didn't plead guilty and we didn't right. know what what the fate was going to be. She had something to lose at this point. Now yes. it's kind of like, what, what else does she have to lose? She's not going to be at the reunion, which we'll talk about later. So I mm-hmm. think you might be right. Maybe we'll get closure at the reunion. Um, I sure hope so. I hope so too. All right. Well, we'll talk more about this episode because there was a lot more other drama mm-hmm. going on. But before we get to all that, let's see what you guys have to say about last week's show. Gina Maggi said, Lisa deserves the house for the kids. Lenny wanted out, but he doesn't deserve everything he wants as a result, not father material. Totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Flamingo Joe said, Heather seems tone deaf. We can't hear what when, what Whitney is trying to get out because Heather interrupts and starts gaslighting her. It's very bizarre. That, um, yeah. A lot of Heather's relationships are kind of bizarre. Yes, I agree. And mm-hmm. it was funny when I was watching that. episode, my sister keeps saying, um, all Heather ever says is ride or die, ride or die. Mm-hmm. But like, are any of her friendships ride or die when you're getting black eyes from your friends? <laughs> Seriously, that's not a friend that I want to have. No. Um, and then Yvette says, her Joe Judice podcast in full, Teresa and Joe are excellent at co-parenting. That's the nicest thing I can say. Um, I mean, like we said last week, uh, we were totally shocked that the two of them kind of figured things out. And it was revealed on her podcast that Louie actually wrote a letter to the judge to appeal for Joe to come back. So it seems yeah, like, yeah. you know, they're really trying to make something work for their family and they've come to a really good place. Who would have thought? Well, speaking of, let's get uh, to the Jersey trailer because they released the new trailer for the season. What did you think? It's so good. Before yeah. we break it all down, let's take a really quick look. Take a look. And he saw Melissa in the back seat, and she was making out with another guy. I don't think you guys are happy. You. What do I need to prove to you? Get out of my face. Shut the up. I'm going to punch him in the face, because I got nothing to lose. Oh, my God! She's always wanted to keep my brother and I apart. She got her wish. Oh, my God. February 7th cannot come soon enough. It's uh-huh. going to be amazing. You know, we got some new housewives, some new faces, mm-hmm. and it certainly looks like they are bringing the Jersey drama. Oh, and yeah. uh, I think it's going to be a good season. I feel like, you know, the, you know, in the clip that we just saw, we know that the rumor was about Melissa uh, possibly making out with some guy in the back of a car. And I mm-hmm. think that's what kind of triggered this whole thing. I, that surprised me. I didn't see that one coming. I, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not saying there's, any, I think there's any truth to it. I'm not sure there is. It sounds like a dirty Jersey yeah. rumor, mm-hmm. but I did not see that rumor coming. 
no, I didn't see that rumor coming yeah. either. You know, I, I think it's going to be an explosive, explosive season. We you know we have some drama between Jennifer and Margaret as well. Jackie comes back as a friend of, like I said, we have some new faces in the mix too. Mm-hmm. Um, we see a lot of, I thought it was interesting, Dolores, you know, showing off her new boyfriend. And it seems like she and Frank have a lot of tension with that, um, with him coming into the mix. So I think it's going to be a really good season. Yeah, that's a bigger storyline than I thought it would be, or at yeah. least it, it appears to be in the trailer. Mm-hmm. Totally. I cannot wait. It's going to be so good. Um, All right. Well, moving on to some other news. Jen Shah's closet, this is great, was filled with fakes. So following a March 2021 raid of her Utah home, federal agents discovered a number of counterfeit designer handbags and luxury jewelry. So in legal documents obtained by TMZ, uh, you know, it said that um, Jen, who often, of course, she boasted about all of her wealthy lifestyle on uh, Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. So she attained a purse collection that included 30 knockoff bags claiming to come from Chanel, Hermes, Louis Vuitton, Gucci, Valentino, Fendi, Balenciaga. So officials also recovered 40 pieces of jewelry that were passed off as items from Chanel, Cartier, Louis Vuitton, Dior, and Tiffany. The search of Jen Shaw's home came the same day that she and assistant Stuart Smith were arrested in March of 2021 for their alleged roles in a telemarketing scheme that including, you know, um, uh, you know, scheming hundreds of victims that were older than 55 years old. Not surprised by this at all. Not at all. I mean, honestly, sometimes when they wear the really over the top, like big C earrings, like I kind of assume those are knockoffs, like unless it's Kathy Hilton, right. who wouldn't wear something so showy. So <laughs> exactly. I'm surprised. I'm not surprised. Not surprised at all. <laughs> not surprised at all. But that's a lot of fake designer duds in that closet. It sure is. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, more Jen Shaw. We're, we can't give this lady a rest this week. Yes. She's all over the news, all over the episode, all over the news. Um, mm-hmm. ahead of her sentencing, uh, the Bravo star has requested a shorter prison sentence. So in a four page letter she wrote to the judge obtained by CNN this week, she said, the terrible business decisions I made and professional relationships I developed stem from some personal painful experiences that I was going through in my life. Shah's note, which was titled how I got involved in the situation revealed that she is hoping to receive a prison sentence of three years. The Utah native pled guilty to fraud earlier this year and is facing a maximum prison sentence of 30 years with five years of supervised release. Um, Her future with Bravo also remains up in the air. Neither Bravo nor Cohen have addressed a potential cast shakeup on Salt Lake City, but we now know that Shaw did not attend the season three reunion. It was taped earlier this month. Mm -hmm. Um, In an Instagram statement from December 16th, she said... On September 14th, 2022, I was informed by Bravo executives that I was not invited to attend the season three reunion. I was disappointed because I would have uh, I would have no venue to confront inaccuracies and address my storyline with cast members. Shaw further alleged that the network changed their minds last month and invited her to share her perspective at the New York City uh, reunion special. She said, I was clear with Bravo that our, out of respect for the courts and a standing judicial order, I would not be in a position to discuss anything related to my legal case or sentencing. Bravo found this unsatisfactory and said they expected to discuss the storyline that they and that expectation has no regard for me or my family's well-being. So under legal advice, I will not be attending the reunion. I need to focus on the most important thing in my life, my family. And of course, we know her sentencing has been postponed until January 6th of 2023. Well, there were some rumors flying around afterwards that she was going to do a two hour sit down with Andy Cohen afterwards. So I don't know if that's necessarily yeah, yeah. true. I mean, maybe she's going to do that after the sentencing because at that yeah. point she already knows her fate. Whatever she can say is not really going to, you know, change anybody's mind anymore. So yeah. maybe that will happen. I do yeah. feel like we should hear from her. I would like mm-hmm. to hear from her and see, you know, what she has to say about everything because at this point, all throughout the season, she was maintaining her innocence. So it would be yeah. nice to figure out why she flipped. And, you know, why she pled guilty. I mean, obviously to get a lesser sentence, but it's mm-hmm. going to be interesting to see how much time she gets. I know. I know. It's going to be a long time. I do agree though. I think after she knows the verdict, mm-hmm. that's when she should sit down with Andy. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right. Well, Cynthia Bailey confirmed that she is returning to Real Housewives of Atlanta, but only as a friend. So she is, of course, fresh off her divorce from Mike Hill and is ready for a return on TV. She said in an interview with Jay's reality blog, I can say that I am going to play with the girls a little bit this season, maybe some future seasons, but only as a friend. She said the ladies have a few more weeks of filming left and she is getting invited to their events. I'm excited to see her back. It wasn't really a long break, but it was excited to see her back. Are you dating a little bit? 
Yeah, dating a little bit. Maybe, you know, who knows? Maybe she, maybe her husband didn't want her being on the show anymore. Yeah. And, you know, now that she's not with him, maybe she wants to get back into the swing of things. So exciting yeah. to see Cynthia Bailey back in the mix. Yes. Let's get into this week's Real Talk. And we caught up with the OG of the OC, Vicki Gumbelson. She, of course, had a very messy public split with her ex-fiance, Steve, and she did not hold anything back when it comes to talking about him. So take a look. It seems like you're really happy in this relationship. I am, but I'm cautiously optimistic because Lord knows I've gotten my heart broken, right? Um, I don't know how anybody says they fall in love after three months and get married right away like my ex. So that's weird. But there's no way I'm at that place of getting married right now. I am still healing mm -hmm. from the narcissistic abuse and the trauma bonding and all that crap yeah. that happened. Um, but I'm so much better off and I'm so happy with who I am. I'm not dependent upon somebody else for my happiness. If I want to do a little bit of tweaking on my body, I'm going to do it. And I'm not going to ask permission from anybody. Mm -hmm. So that's the confidence that I wish I had five years ago. Yeah. How are you? How, what was this healing process like for you? Um, of the relationship or yeah of the relationship it's, it's still ongoing i'm yeah. still in therapy it's um you know when you're lying next to somebody and they're having sex with somebody else and creating a life with somebody else while you're lying next to them and and living together that is a form of abuse mm -hmm. and that abuse is deep um you know and i um you know, I was used again and I vowed to myself, I'm not going to be used anymore, but, you know, living in my homes and driving my cars and doing my life and having, starting a relationship with 35 year old is, is unheard of to me. I don't come from that stock. I don't know that type of hard heart. Um, but it's still, it's still a recovery that I'm in. It's been over a year mm -hmm. and, um, you know, he got married right away and that's weird. Fourth marriage. Um, we were engaged and I guess he doesn't take those even engagement vows seriously. So I'm, uh, it's going to be a while. It's not, I'm not, I'm not hundred percent out of the, out of the dark place that I was in, but I'm so much better. Yeah. I don't blame you. I can't imagine going through that. And then especially going through it on mm -hmm. camera and having to kind of relive this oh. over and over again, it's gotta oh. be really, really horrible. Oh. I know that you said a while back that maybe at BravoCon that he was cheating on his wife and that you have proof. I mean, are you ever going to reveal that? And, or do you just want to kind of put this? Well, I didn't past? reveal it. Uh, somebody reached out to me that he took a picture with at a local bar around here. And then he direct messaged her. He wanted to take her out for a drink. Like that's cheating to me. Mm -hmm. You're reaching out to another woman while your wife is next to you, but he's obsessed with social media, obsessed with Instagram. I don't know why anybody would follow him. He, he's a nobody, you know, he was my ex fiance, but he puts himself as a public figure, a public figure of what, but he's a cheater. A cheater will always cheat. If they don't have loyalty or commitment, they're going to do it. They're going to look for their next, you know, their next victim. And that's what he's doing. Yeah. You know, I know you said you're cautiously optimistic with Michael, but what makes this relationship different for you? He's, he's uh self-made, he's mm -hmm. successful. He's got confidence. Um, I think, in my past relationships, my last two, I was the leader. I was the one that took care of them. And um, I realized that that's never going to end well. Mm -hmm. And now Michael is independent of me. I don't take care of him. He doesn't take care of me. We all both have our own families, our own resources. So it comes from a healthy place, you know, and it, it's just nice. It's just nice to have a successful man that isn't on social media. I mean, Steve was, is on, he's obsessed with social media. I don't know why he has to like everything. He has to comment on everything. He reaches out to all my contacts, wants them to follow him. It's like, why, what are you doing? So she goes off to work every day. He drives her to school and then he comes and back to his apartment that he's living at with her and goes on social media. It's bizarre to me. Yeah. There's no value there. There's no inspiration. There's no reality. So he's still living in my shadow. Mm -hmm. Has he ever tried to reach out to you in this past year? No, he blocked me and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I love his family. I've seen his daughter and his mm -hmm. mother obviously has to lean towards her son, but her and I had an incredibly beautiful relationship and I haven't heard from her in a couple months. So that's sad. I lost everybody in that family and that sucks. Yeah, she is uh, still not happy about it one year later. I, I love how open she was with you. I mean... It's kind of nice that she's not on the show, so she doesn't have to save any of yes. it. 
Mm-hmm. She can just be open and honest. Although, is she back on next season? We never. She is. Her. She is back yeah, on yeah. a little bit. She uh, filmed a couple um, episodes here, there, here and there, and she yeah. said she's excited to be on. She was also um, a little jealous of Tamara getting that full time spot back, but she said she wanted Tamara wanted it more than she did, which I find hard to believe. But oh, funny. Um, I love love Vicky. Excited to have her back, and it is kind of surprising to me that they didn't invite her back full time because she has such a storyline going on right now. Ooh, she does, and she. Looks- yeah. Great. Really good. She does. She looks great. Yeah. She lost 22 pounds. So she's uh, living her best life right now and has a yeah. new boyfriend. So she seems really happy. Good for her. All right, well, let's get into this week's episodes. We talked a lot about the Heather's Black Eye, but there was a lot still going on this week, especially with Lisa and Meredith and, you know, going after her business. I'm just kind of confused by all of this, but... No. The, the two of them just need to move on from this. Drama. Yeah, I don't think this friendship is ever going to come back from the things that they've said about each other, the SECs that they've pulled up on her business. I mean, I, you know, I don't, I also, I don't know a whole lot about starting a business or anything like that, but I feel like this isn't that weird for companies yeah. to do maybe to mm-hmm. file. And then I, I don't know. I don't know anything about this, but it didn't seem that abnormal for a newer company to ask for help or. Yeah. I don't think so either. But yeah, yeah, it seems like Meredith needs to let it go. Mm-hmm. The hot mic moment happened a long time ago. Move on. And the two of them just, I mean, it makes for good TV. Lisa Barlow is quickly becoming one of my favorite housewives of all time, though. She is oh fantastic. God. Her impression of Meredith was amazing. Yes. So spot on. She is just so great. Her one liners are, are fantastic. And she's she's really funny. She is. Um, I mean, was there anything else that kind of stood out to you from this episode besides the black eye moment? I mean, no, I can't get over it. I still keep mm-hmm. playing back Jen's reaction versus Whitney's reaction and who was more genuine. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think it has to be one of those two. Yeah, I think so, too. I think you're right. I think we might find out it's Jen at the reunion. I know. Oh, um, well, who knows? I mean, this yeah. was another to be continued moment. So maybe we'll yeah. see what happens yeah. uh, in the next few weeks. Yeah. All right, let's head on over to Potomac because th- these ladies continue to bring it. Oh, yeah. Ashley is house hunting, you know, without Michael Darby. She is kind of going out on her own. So it seems like, you know, she's moving on. I just hope next season Luke makes a cameo. Yeah. I need that to happen. They better be shooting this mm-hmm. whole relationship forming and blossoming. Um I really hope so. I hope that she's looking for a house, you know, in Montana or wherever he's from. Where is he? Minnesota, yes. Minnesota, (laughs) Montana, same. (laughs) <laughs> we'll start with them. It's fine. Yeah. Um, you know, we see a little bit more of Robin's wedding planning and this whole prenup situation. I mean, you know, she's covering her tracks. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I think we've we've all learned our lesson from these housewives to get a prenup if you're a housewife. Yes, get a prenup. Um, <laughs> Candace's music video, uh, you know, that's, uh, you know, she's like, uh, has a really good voice and she's like an actual artist. I mean, as compared to. Compared to like Melissa Gorga on display. I mean, this is actually good. I know. It was a high budget Mm -hmm. production. I felt like I didn't think people made music videos like this anymore, but it looks pretty good. It does look good. Um, Well, then let's talk about the Mia of it all, because that's what the crux of this episode was about and her interesting relationship with her friend Jackie. She has given Jackie her boyfriend so she can watch her have sex with him. Like, this is just crazy. Messy and weird and strange, all the things. Um, The weirdest part to me was that when they were 19 and 20 years old, they like, I I, I forget the word she used, but fondled each other or something like that. Right. And she said that she wanted to become a gynecologist. I'm like, "Mm." you know, if you're going to med school, they, they offer you people to do that, you know, f- patients. They're called patients. Right. <laughs> like, not your friends. Not, you don't look up their um, the JJ with a flashlight. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. TMI, like some things we don't need to know. Like no. I understand you're a housewife. You have to tell us everything, but some things are better left unsaid. But good for her for the entertainment. <laughs> yeah, seriously. And then, you know, after all that, it was hard to like concentrate on anything else. But yeah. Wendy un- un- uh, went through some procedures. Mm-hmm. She seems to be okay. You yeah. know, this stress of life kind of got to her. We saw Giselle and Robin's show. Um, I, these ladies are just so funny. They really are. Good for them. They, they really hustle. They do. They are they are hustlers. They really yeah. are. All right. Well, let's get into our social spotlight of the week. Who caught your attention on social media? 
Um, Ramona Singer, actually, for another throwback. Um, she posted this video dancing with Margaret Josephs and Marisol Patton. Um, really love it. They all look fantastic. Getting into the holiday spirit. Definitely. Um, speaking of holiday spirit, I had to give it up to Lisa Barlow. They posted this really funny um, moment on Watch What Happens Live talking about her um, her unofficial, highly anticipated holiday album singing Away in the Manger. It is so fantastic. Take a quick look. Watch what She is milking this viral moment for all it's worth. And I, and we are so blessed for this. We really are. I would not be surprised if she comes out with a Christmas album next year. Not surprised at all. It's probably already in the works. Yeah. All right. Well, that is it for this week's episode of Getting Real with the Housewives. Please let us know, like Mandy said in the comments, who do you think gave Whitney the, uh, who do you think gave Heather the black eye? Was it Whitney? Was it Jen? Was it somebody else that we weren't thinking about? So please let us know in the comments and make sure to check back on next week's show where we read live the biggest housewife stories of the year going to be a good one so we'll check in with you guys next week bye guys for more news content and exclusive interviews make sure to hit the sub like and bell button down below and visit usmagazine.com